um, turn over to now, talking about light-activated antimicrobial agents, commonly called photosensitizers. I don't think that light-activated antimicrobial agents are necessarily the be-all and end-all and the only solution to the problems of antibiotic resistance, but they could be an important contributing factor which will take the pressure off resistance development and help conserve antibiotics for life-threatening diseases. So what is a light-activated antimicrobial agent? This is a chemical that has no antibacterial or antimicrobial activity in the dark, but when you irradiate it with light of a specific wavelength, then it will activate that molecule so that it produces moieties, chemical moieties, which can kill bacteria. And these chemical moieties include reactive oxygen species, such as single oxygen, hydroxyl radicals, and many, a wide variety of other organic radicals. So that's what a, a light-activated antimicrobial agent is. And one of the ones that we've done most work on is methylene blue. And methylene blue, this is the absorbance spectrum of methylene blue, and you can see it's got peak absorbance over the range of about 630 to about 670, 680. So if you irradiate methylene blue with light of that wavelength, then you can activate it. And this is what happens. Our methylene blue in the ground state, the normal state, absorbs one photon of light and it's promoted to an excited singlet state. Now many molecules do that. Many molecules will absorb a photon of light. Most molecules will then um, fall back to the ground state almost straight away and emit the excess energy either as heat or by light. And there's not a lot of heat there and not a lot of light from one photon or from a molar photons, so it would not normally be observable. Photosensitizers are molecules that instead of falling back to the ground state, undergo electronic transfer to an excited triplet state. And this is an electronically excited state, and this will then fall back to the ground state via a type 1 or a type 2 photochemical reaction. And these photochemical reactions are um, characterized in the next two slides. A type 1 photochemical reaction is when the sensitizer in the triplet state reacts with water to form a hydroxyl radical or with biomolecules giving free radicals. So that's a type 1 photochemical reaction. A type 2 photochemical reaction is where the sensitizer in its triplet state reacts with oxygen in the ground state to form the very, very reactive species singlet oxygen. So the photosensitizer absorbs light, is promoted to a high energy triplet state, then reacts with water, oxygen or organic molecules to form these very reactive species which then can interact with any neighboring bacteria or microbes and cause cell damage and death. So that's the principle behind it. So if this is our microbe and we have our photosensitizer irradiated, these reactive species which damage the cell. Now this mechanism is very, very important. It shows that it's a non-specific mechanism. In other words, the single oxygen and free radicals are attacking the bacterial membrane, the bacterial cell wall, any proteins or capsules on the outside. They can penetrate through the cytoplasmic membrane and inactivate um, DNA or cell organelles within the microbe itself. So it's a bit of a, bundle, a blunderbuss approach. Lots and lots of targets for these um, reactive species. Now that distinguishes it, it's an important distinction from antibiotics. An antibiotic targets a single metabolic process in a microbe. And what happens, microbes can readily develop resistance to that by bypassing that metabolic defect in some way. Because bacteria um, mutate at the rate of about 10 to the 8 per generation, and seeing as each generation can be as short as 20 minutes, within you know, a few days, the chances of getting a, a mutation which, is, um, developed, which shows resistance to that sort of antibiotic are very high. With these light-activated antimicrobial agents, because they're not targeting a single metabolic activity, um, then we can suggest that it would be very, very difficult for bacteria or other microbes to develop resistance to these light-activated drugs. 
Now, being a bacteriologist of long standing, I will never say bacteria will never develop resistance because they're clever little critters. And, you know, but it's very difficult to imagine how they could develop resistance to those. So I think it's very, very unlikely, but I will never say impossible.